Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, um, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Um. Shout out to Sahim for the nice talk on GitHub with Argo CD. So yeah, the um, Argo CD is one too, and Flux is another. You can use either of them. They are both open source projects under the CNTF. So my talk is just going to be short. It's just going to be an introduction to GitOps and Flux. So um, yeah, <laughs> I've done this before, but my name is Onyokere Somtochi. I'm a um, Dev Experience Engineer at WeaveWorks, and I work on Flux. So I want to sort of take it back a bit and sort of explain what GitOps is and what the need for it, what the need for it is so you know with um divine's talk he had like he was deploying an app and he did you know kubectl apply right so that's great for like development workflow and everything but then how do you take it to production like how do you manage this when you have different themes different moving parts does everybody get access to the cluster you know someone is running kubectl here and kubectl kubectl there you can see that there is a need for a better way to manage how things are deployed especially within bigger organizations right and then when you make changes to let's say you updated you had a deployment file with a particular tag in it let's say you wanted to update the tag right so you updated it and then you did kubectl apply right so you can't let's say there was an issue with that tag, right? How do you quickly, you know, revert to the older version? So there becomes issues when you're trying to manage all your manifests using kubectl apply. Um, Kelsey, Kelsey Hightower will say that kubectl apply is the new SSH. You know, you're not supposed to SSH into servers and stuff like that. In the same way, it's not very scalable to keep managing your application and deployment using kubectl. Uh, so that's when um, the CEO of WeaveWorks, Alexis Richardson, call, coined the term GitOps. So GitOps is basically a concept where you store your store your Kubernetes manifest declaratively in Git, and then there is an agent. Let me see. Do I have a slide for that? Okay. So GitOps. These are like the GitOps principle, right? Your system is managed declaratively, and when we say declaratively, it means that you define what you want, and then something else works. That's you. You're defining a state that you want a cluster, your cluster to be in, right? And you store it in Git. Git has, of course, we use Git. We know that Git has like versioning. You know. You can tag commits, and then each commit is easily revertible, right? You have a log of changes, of each change that has been made to your manifest. So that's where we come about security. You know, before someone makes a change, you know, the person has to make a pull request. You can get eyes on it. You know, if something breaks, you sort of can look at your commit log and know, okay, this is what we've been doing. This is how the deployments have been progressing. And then if you push it to Git, there has to be something that pulls it in, pulls your changes from Git, and then applies your changes on the cluster, which you know now brings spins up your application. You know, it applies the deployment YAML, it applies the services and all of that on the cluster, and then you know spins it up, and then you can you can continue to access it. Then lastly, we talk about continuous reconciliation, right? You don't just it's not a one-shot operation. You don't just push your files to Git and then they get applied once. So there's a continuous loop, just like in Kubernetes, there's a reconciliation loop where it's constantly being checked. Does the state of the cluster match what is on Git at a defined interval? Like if someone comes into the cluster and like touches something, you know, like maybe your pod is deleted a, a deployment, right? On the next run of the, the loop, the agent is supposed to, it could be Flux, it could be Argo CD, it's supposed to realize that, okay, um, the, the deployment is missing. It's not in the cluster, but it has but it, it has been defined in Git. So it would apply it. Or in a case where the deployment is deleted from Git, it would delete it in the cluster. So it's basically, the Git serves as a source of truth for it. So that's basically what GitOps is. GitOps is you define your applications in Git and you have something continuously reconciling them on the cluster. So, you know, it comes with many benefits. So 
we talk about security, you have an audit log of each change to your manifest. Any malicious changes would be reverted on the next run of the reconciliation loop, you know. Then developers, it's just like if you require everyone to deploy their applications using Skip CTL, that means the person has to be onboarded to Kubernetes, right? It means that the person needs to know, okay, cube, cube this, cube that, deployments, this. But if you just need that git that's if you just make it easier and you know everybody already uses git right so it's easier to onboard people and also because there's changes that are easily revertible right if you revert your change in git that change gets applied on the cluster so you know that you can easily undo mistake right so it enhances productivity that way and is also increasingly reliable right just imagine you know a really bad day where you, your cluster is destroyed, right? You can easily get back up to speed with all your applications because you have all those manifests stored somewhere, right? You can basically install Flux and point it to your repo and say, okay, this is the state I want this cluster to be in. So you can see that it helps with stuff, things like um, disaster recovery. So if you lose, you know, if let's say your application is deleted by mistake or even the whole cluster, if you, you are actually using GitOps to manage things, right? You can, you can easily reconcile and get back your, your cluster. So benefits of Flux. Flux is um, split into six Kubernetes controllers for those who are just knowing what, who are just hearing about controllers for the first time. That's basically the, the, the part of Kubernetes, right? When you create a deployment, um, a, a deployment creates you know pods so when you create the deployment i mean when you apply the manifest on the cluster there is a cube controller manager on the cube control plane that is watching for you know such manifest when it notices the that so is there's a controller that is running on the cluster that is constantly watching the deployments right and reconciling them to to the pods so if you def define a deployment that is supposed to have two pods right the controller is watching um, the number of pods and it's like on a loop it will count the number of pods if it sees oh there's one more pod than it should be let's say there's an extra third pod associated with the same deployment it will delete it or if it's discovered that there's one less pod it will create an extra one so it's um it fits into the kubernetes model where kubernetes is already declarative and it uses controllers to manage its um, resources on the cluster so that's basically what Flux will do for you. Flux will check that your applications are running as they should, as you have defined them in Git. So it, it comes with support for Customize and Helm. We have a Helm and Customize controller. It's easily extensible. We built it in a way that you could you know, take parts of it. You know, there are people building solutions on top of Flux. You could take out parts of it. You know, you could build your own controller and you know, mix it up with Flux controller. So there's a lot of advantage to using Flux. So just in summary, Flux develops GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. You know, with um, with control plane, you can spin up, you can have, have a manager, right? You can have a cluster that creates other cluster. Basically, it's still the same concepts of controllers and custom resource definitions, right? You create a controller that understands a new resource. So when the controller the controller can you can tell something like crossplane crossplane has a cluster resource you can tell and when you apply it on cluster crossplane will create clusters for you and make sure that it matches what you what you've defined so it can provide GitOps for both your apps and infrastructure you push to git you know as simple as that and then flux will do the rest for you flux works with your existing tools like customize and helm it works with all Kubernetes tooling. It does multi-tenancy. We also have a notification controller that notifies you of changes, right? If you, let's say you make a deployment, it sends you a message on Slack or GitHub. It could be a GitHub um, status notification, you know, like, oh, your deployment succeeded or it failed. These are trust flux and there's a lovely community for you to work with. So yeah, I've been through sort of this. So it's basically um, it's basically going over what GitOps is again. It's an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes, and it utilizes version controlled system as the single source of truth. 
So you it also enables continued delivery. So it, your apps can be you know continuously delivered through automation um, automated deployments, and you can manage your applications and infrastructure declaratively. So yeah, there's this is an overview of Flux. Flux is a set of controllers. So the way Flux is Flux is built right now, it's it's it sort of breaks out different functionalities into different controllers. So the source controller pulls in your your Git repository, like the files you've stored in Git. The customized controller connects to the source controller and you know applies the manifest. Is what has like customized, you know, using customized to apply the manifest in cluster. We have Helm controller for Helm also connects to the source controller. The notification controller, like we just said, is for alerting you, you know, giving you some notifications on what's going on. And then the image reflector automation controller is used for um, watching, let's say you're in your CI, in your continuous integration, you you build an image, right? And push it to, push it to, to the image registry. Now Flux watches the image registry when in, you can tell Flux like, oh, I want for this production cluster, I, I want to update for every major version, right? So one point this or one point that, you can tell Flux like, I want you to watch with the image reflector controller. You want, I want this, you to watch the, the image registry and like notice when there's a new version, right? So you've, you've, you've pushed, let's say you've pushed a new version of your app, your CI has built it and pushed it to the image repository. Now, Flux, what Flux does is that it would update your manifest. That is the image automation controller. It will update your manifest in Git with the new image tag, and Flux will and the Flux, the source controller will still will pull the new manifest and apply it to you, apply it to your cluster. So basically, it takes that's the CD part, right? Continuous delivery. It watches your um, it watches your 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 image registry. If you saw in Sain's demo, he had a GitHub action that sort of tag that updated the, the YAML. If you if anyone what, remember what what he demoed, so in Flux's case, once there's a push to Git, it will pull it and update the YAML itself for you, and then deploy it on the cluster. So there's also under the Flux CD project, we also have Flagger, which is used for you know progressive delivery, deploying apps with canaries, feature flags, AB rollouts, and also it can manage any Kubernetes resource. So yeah, it's Flux enables application de deployments CD, and with the help of Flagger, you know Flux and Flagger, Flagger they go well, they work well together. You can also have progressive delivery, and all of this happens automatically, right? Progressive delivery, just to expand on it a bit, is when, you know, you're deploying, <clears throat> you're deploying a new version of your app, right? But you, you, won't, you don't want to push all the traffic. You don't want to switch over immediately. You know, what if there's a problem? So in progressive delivery, you, you know, gradually shift the traffic in, in, in a particular way. And if you notice there's an issue, you can quickly revert, right? Because you you notice it on time and the other one is still running. You can easily revert. You can do this gradual process of moving from one version of the app to the other. So Flux can push back to Git for you, which is what, what we talked about with the image registry, right? When it notices a new tag for the image, right, it could do the pushing back to pushing to git for you it would it would update your manifest for you so it works with your tools so for your for your the source of your manifest you can use github gitlab bitbucket you could use your own self-hosted git, git servers you know for people who are working in like more constrained environments you know all major container registries to ecr acr gcr you know all the major providers so it's basically can plug in into whatever like setting you're already using, you know, and become this valuable part of your deploy deployment process. So it's, we've said before, it works with customized Helm. These are, customized Helm are two CLIs that people use in helping them deploy Kubernetes manifest. So it's also work with each of them. It uses um, RBAC, which is role-based control to, you know, control access. 
So it does multi tenancy. You can set flux up in a multi tenant switch such that you know flux is reconciling manifest for different tenants, but in a secure way. So it, for to expand on multi tenancy, multi tenancy is when there's is what we call more than one tenant running in a cluster. You know, you might be you know a very large company and you have different teams, different as um, namespaces assigned to different teams and they are supposed to deploy their applications in their particular namespaces you know they are that's a most tenant cluster you get the one person doesn't own the whole cluster they are different people using the cluster so in multi-tenant situation you have to be careful so that one tenant in, it depends on what kind of there are different levels of multi tenancy but you have to be careful so that one tenant does not access the other tenants you know you want to lock down the cost that it beats and flux can still help with that so yes it's a lot to notify you we have slack notifications you know microsoft teams github gitlab status bitbucket status notification you know you might want a with github status notification you might want like, you know, with GitHub, there's this, you can have this little sign behind, beside your, your commits to show if it, if, it, if it passed. So you can send back that status back to Git. If your deployment passes, you know, you can send a notification to Git, GitHub or GitLab, whatever Git provider you're using. And it will show that, oh, it might show a blue tick, a, a green tick and say, oh, this. so you know that this, this, this commit, you know, was deployed successfully or if there was an issue, you could, it would, you know, alert that, okay, there's an issue. You probably now see a, a, a red cross instead. So yeah, people trust Flux. Uh, Flux is a CNCF incubating project. And it was one of the only two projects alongside help categorized as adopt in CNCF CICD reader. So you can check that out later. Um, of course, we are a loving community that is oh, very, we are like, I've enjoyed so much working with Flux. You know, we are very welcoming, very open. We have contributors from everywhere. So we're also an open source project. We're also open to new contribution contributors coming around. We have, uh, since you can see my screen, we have, you know, good first issues. This is the Flux CD repo. We have good first issues if you're looking to contribute. So you could always take a look at the Flux repos. This is not the, the only repo. We have a different repository for each of the controllers. Uh, most of it is written in Go. So yeah. So we're also looking for contributors. If you like what we're doing, you like the sound of it, you can come around, you know, just attend our meetings figure out what we're up about. And if you feel like contributing, you can. So this slide is basically going over what I've said before. The source controller fetches your files in Git. The customized controller applies the manifest. You can see that there's a particular controller assigned for each step that Flux is supposed to do. So Helm is for Helm charts. The notification controller is for the notification dispatch. The image reflector controller is for you know pulling that the metadata that's the tags from Git and then the from an image registry and then the image automation controller is for sort of posting back to Git, updating the Git, um, the, the YAMLs in Git. So yeah, all of these controllers work together to give you a nice outcome. <laughs> if you like pancakes, yeah, it's it's basically like all these ingredients mix up to form something really helpful. So yeah, we work with other tools and all these reasons I love Flux <laughs> and other people too like to above. We we hear like stories back from people like, oh, like this has made using Kubernetes so much easier for me. You know, I've been able to run multi-tenancy. You know, we have this, if you have an application, right? Let's say you have <clears throat> an application that depends on a database. You can define it in Flux so that Flux knows that, okay, it doesn't de deploy the application till, till the database is ready, right? So you can sort of have a dependency workflow, like, right? You can say, okay, don't deploy. This app depends on this. And Flux knows not to create the application until the other one is ready. So we integrate with Helm. We give notifications and alerts. And, you know, Flux manages itself declaratively. Like, you, in you can install Flux with the bootstrap, and Flux will, you know, 
the bootstrap asset accepts a github repository so right from the start like flux manages itself with GitOps, so which i think is kind of awesome so we also have the flux cli to make dealing with flux easier for users so you can get started you can look at our repo we have a getting started guide where you can browse the docs you can join flux cncf slack you know there are, there are users there people you know, ask questions if you're having any any issues. You can sign up for we are mailing on our mailing list. You know, join our meetings and also you know discuss with us on GitHub. Uh, thank you. I don't know. I'm not seeing the chat. Is there any way to stop sharing my screen for a bit? Is there are there questions? Okay. Hmm. No questions yet. Uh, I think no questions good. yet, um, but it was a very interesting session. And uh, uh, Somto's uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter handle is Somto Chiama. So if you have any question, you can reach out to her on Twitter or you can join in on the CNCF Slack and uh, uh, start a conversation there about Flux. Thank you very much, uh, right, Somto Chiama. Uh, very interesting session.